So, it's currently the morning of video release, and I just realized that this video doesn't have an intro. So today we're going to look at my pile of unpainted plastic, and we're going to look at my plan on how to make it all painted plastic. Okay, so we're going to start out with Star Wars Legion, and, well, not a lot, whole lot to say here. I just have a couple of HQ and operators I need to paint up. Count Dooku, Cad Bane, and obviously I still need to assemble the super tactical droid. Um, yeah, that's it for Star Wars. Sticking on the theme with film tie-ins based on previous properties, uh, there's Lord of the Rings. Uh, when the new box came out, I picked up the battle for Pelennor Fields. Uh, I ended up giving all of the Rohirrim to one of my friends. Now I just kept the orcs and the unmounted King Theoden. I also have these Warlord Games boxes too because I have the idea of doing some converted orcs using these cool samurai bases. And this is all of my conquest stuff. Um, it's really not nearly as much as it looks. Uh, this is just the Hundred Kings half of 100 Kings, the 100 Kingdoms half of the starter box with 100 Kingdoms Inspire. The only other thing I have here is the Theist Priest, because I originally actually bought this model um, when I was going to start playing Frostgrave. I wanted to use it as my wizard because uh, it's just a sick model. So these are kind of like my other models, but they don't really cleanly fit into any category. Uh, this is... Who knows how old it was when I got this set. Uh, I picked it up from Reaper Miniatures right as I started getting back into D&D with some of my friends. Um, and this one I picked up last week, um, just because it's cool. Okay. On to display miniatures and busts. So to start out with, I have five, six models from the Echoes of Camelot Kickstarter. This is the only one that is assembled. The Duchess from Miniac, which has been started. I have the Gemstone Dragon from Matt Colville's Kingdoms in Warfare Kickstarter. Mostly assembled. I'm still thinking I'm going to do sub-assemblies on that. Then, Broken Anvil's Lichbane, and Hilma from Squidmar's Brush Miniature. Kickstarter. Okay, moving on to the big one. Games Workshop. Uh, starting with Blood Bowl. Uh, between my brother and I, we have a handful of the teams. All of them are in various states of built and or painted. Nothing's really done, but some are more done than others. So here we have, I don't know, five to eight old school Jakari that I legitimately have no idea where they came from. We have a Chaos Space Marine hero from the Death Guard one. We have 40k Ironman that I got from a rescue lot at my LGS. About 10 more Thousand Sons when I was thinking I had a conversion idea for them that I still might use for a kill team. And then we have an unopened Bellacore that was a gift from my friends on my birthday that I am very much looking forward to spending some time with. So this is orcs of all size, shapes, and flavor. Uh, we have the fantasy ones, which is basically the big old dragon, and then start collecting orcs. We have the assault on Blackreach box. I'm not exactly sure how many of the orcs are in here, as I, I got this from a garage sale a long time ago. Uh, it does have the original Coptas. Uh, the orcs are basically all my brothers, but it still falls to me to paint. 
So this is all of my Lizardman and or Seraphon for Age of Sigmar. Uh, really, it's just three boxes. It's start collecting Seraphon, start collecting Skinks, and then the Lizardman Warband from Warcry. Um, I have a couple of test models painted, but uh, as a whole, it, the entire arm isn't painted. Okay, this is where things start getting real shameful. Uh, this is all for the Horus Heresy, of which I play Salamanders, who are the best faction, though we are unloved. Okay, so, to go through this real quick, uh, Age of Darkness box. Uh, nothing's finished. I almost have 20 Space Marines done. Uh, two more Demos Rhinos. Fafnir Ran. 30k Ariman. Primarch Vulcan, which is another gift from a friend. Uh, and on top of that, five more Cataphracty Terminators. So I got my work set out for me there. On from the Heresy to the Imperium of Man, where I have... Sisters of Battle Box. This is just bits, so I only have one box here. Um, that I want to use it for a cool conversion idea I have for Kill Team. I have Trajan Valdoris along with a Custodian Guard Squad that will be a part of an upcoming video. On top of that with Custodies, I have a Galtus Dreadnought that I picked up from a rescue bin at my LGS. And then I have a ton of Grey Knights, like 20 of them, that are all conversion fodder that I'm still playing with. Let's move on to Space Marines. Now there's way too much here to really point out, so I'm just going to highlight. I have Space Marine half of the Indominus box, a bunch of other generic Space Marine kits, a lot of Space Marine characters, including Mephiston still on sprue from the rescue pile at my LGS. I have the Jazza Strikers box that, yeah, I'm still counting it on here because they are Still basically Space Marines. I use them for Space Marines. And then this old little box dread that I also got from the rescue bin at my LGS. Necrons are nothing to write home about. I have the Necron half of the Indominus box, plus the Catan shard of the Void Dragon, just because I think he's cool. Alright, so last thing, not only of 40k Games Workshop, last bit of my pile of shame in general is my Tau. Uh, Tau are one of the first things I started collecting when I really got back into the hobby. I really enjoy the aesthetic of the whole model line, so I've kind of been going out of my way to pick up a bunch of models, including this one I got on eBay. Uh, this was a, this is a now out of print, uh, crisis suit alternative that was produced by Forge World. It was my favorite crisis suit. And by the time I was actually like old enough and I had money on my own that I could really afford and buy this model, um, it got discontinued. So this is an eBay find. <laughs> Okay, so that's all well and good. I have a fairly extensible pile of shame that I can't seem to get rid of. But now, this video wouldn't do you any good if it was just me going through and explaining my pile of shame. So, let's come up with a plan of attack to get rid of it. I think one of the first and most important parts of this is a little bit of introspection. What kind of painter are you? Are you the kind of person that you know, you, you buckle down and you take one project and you go from that to completion. Or do you prefer to have a variety of options? You kind of graze on things here and there. Knock out one to two steps here, three to four there, so on and so forth. Now, personally, I know I'm this kind of person that I need to focus on a project and take it from start to end, or I will forget about it and leave it. That being said, I'm also a kind of person I know bench army painting isn't for me. Oftentimes when I'm painting, I'll do things squad by squad, 
unit by unit, slowly building up to finish the army I have. And I think another very important step to reducing your pile of shame, don't stop buying models, but slow down. I think sometimes we need to really ask ourselves, do you need it? Here, let's take a look at what my Star Wars army looks like. So this is my full Star Wars Legion collection. I have no models outside of this. Now when you look at this, the three unpainted ones I have don't look so bad. I think my trick was I was able to come up with a good plan when I first got in to allow me to speed paint my models. And then I just kept committed to myself that I would not buy any more until what I had was painted. That's why I haven't bought any more Legion, because I, I still got three. Now, I think largely I'm in a pretty good spot, because in Lord of the Rings and Conquest, I'm still only one box in. I just have half of a starter box of each of those, just like I had with Star Wars. So I think I'm in a good position to catch up with those two. As far as Warhammer, that, that ship sailed. I will, I will always have gray plastic there. Now we know what kind of painter we are. We're going to slow down on the consumption of gray plastic. Um, now it's all about prioritizing. So now I'm going to kind of walk you through my process of it, of how I am going to reduce my own pile of shame. So I know I'm going to take it from start to beginning if that army is going to be finished. So I need to prioritize what armies, what models are coming first. Now, I kind of judge that by a rubric. So I have a set criteria that I'm matching each of these files to. Playing the game, first of all, do I play it often? Have I played it? Do I want to play it? And maybe I don't want to play it. Then we have to ask ourselves, do we want to paint this? I put a little more weight into this one because honestly, excitement is a larger factor for me. If I'm excited to paint something, I'm more likely to finish that project. Now ask yourself, do you have a plan in mind for these models? Is it a, I want to get this army done, not exactly sure what I want to do yet, or I've got a pretty clear idea on what I want to do with it. Maybe do a test model, but you're ready to go and get started painting. And lastly, effort. So is it going to be a very quick speed paint for you? Is it going to be your just regular army building? Or are you going full ball sack on this? So throwing that whole rubric together with my pile of shame on there, it gives me a pretty good roadmap of things I should take care of to knock off of that list. I think unsurprising Star Wars right there at the top. I play it quite a bit. Most of my army's done for it anyway. It's just three models. So yeah, I could probably knock that out in an afternoon. Now we look at what's scored under it. So immediately after is a tie with my heresy stuff and my Lord of the Rings stuff. What can I say? Heresy's new and shiny. I've participated in a couple events for it. I'm having a lot of fun. And I really want to finish painting my salamanders. I think Lord of the Rings is in very much the same situation. Rings of Power has me really hyped on the Lord of the Rings train. And I found a little group at my LGS that we all kind of found out that, wow, there's more than two Lord of the Rings players. Now, there's a few important things to remember with this. One, this is how I work. It might not work for you. I think especially if you're the kind of person that hops from project to project, this is an awful idea and you should ignore all of it. This rubric, it's just that. It's just a rubric. It sets a nice roadmap for you to start knocking out that pile of shame and bring that great plastic down to a manageable level. And even for me, um, I might not follow this list exactly. For example, uh, Conquest, marked at only with four points, I think is going to get bumped up because there's a very large Conquest scene by me. I'd really enjoy playing with all those guys with a fully painted army. So, now you've seen my pile of shame, and you've seen my plan to combat it. Hopefully, this works for you too, and I hope to see you on the other side of that sea of grey.